March 21st was the official opening day of the Apple Shanghai Jing'an store. A Chinese woman was seen outside the store, cursing at the customers in line, accusing them of fawning over foreign things. Being so obsessed with foreign things. How am I being too obsessed with foreign things? Can I just buy whatever works best for me? I choose the products I like. Why are they able to sell in China? Why is there such a large store in such a popular place in Shanghai? Apples can only sell because of people like you. Do you know how many jobs Apple brings to China every year? We don't need it. We have our own Huawei. You are despicable, doing despicable things. This store is open here, and I am saying what I have to say. Is there anything wrong with that? Apple's business in China has been increasingly impacted by factors such as the slowing Chinese economy, geopolitical tensions, and rising nationalist sentiments, according to data released by the market research firm Counterpoint Research in early March. iPhone sales in China declined by 24 percent year on year in the first six weeks of 2024. In the face of these challenges, Apple opened the second largest store in Shanghai Jing'an to enhance its competitiveness on the Chinese market. Crowds started gathering up the day before opening. The Apple Shanghai Jing'an store is the biggest in China. I feel extremely honored to be the first customer here. I'm a junior high school student, and I came here to line up at 7:30 yesterday evening. I use almost entirely Apple products, including the iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, and iPhone. Using Apple products feels like having a very complete ecosystem, and the experience is seamless. Tensions in U.S.-China relations are escalating, particularly in the areas of technology and trade, and many companies have been decoupling from China. Among the companies affected, Apple and Tesla have been the first to feel its impact. As the world's largest companies by market capitalization, both Apple and Tesla have increased their investment in China in recent years. However, as U.S.-China economic and trade decoupling progresses, the prospects for both companies in China have become uncertain. Despite Apple's active promotion of its new iPhones to Chinese consumers, its sales in China have declined by 13 percent, indicating a significant downturn. During the same period, Huawei smartphone sales surged by 64 percent. Last September, American media cited sources saying that the Chinese Communist Party had extended the ban on iPhone usage to government-supported institutions and state-owned enterprises. Some Chinese institutions even instruct employees not to bring iPhones to work. Meanwhile, Huawei saw a significant increase in domestic sales last year after launching a domestically produced smartphone. Backed by both media promotion and support by Chinese authorities, according to a Counterpoint research report, Apple's share of the smartphone market in China has dropped from 19 percent in the same period last year to 15.7 percent, and its market share ranking has fallen from second to fourth place. Huawei has surpassed Apple to rise to second place, with its market share expanding from 9.4 percent in the same period last year to 16.5 percent. However, the report also points out that the overall Chinese smartphone market has shrunk by 7 percent. Meng Mengjiang, senior analyst at Counterpoint Research, said that Apple faces fierce competition from Huawei in the high-end market, as well as pricing pressure from Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi. Tesla's situation in China is similar, according to Bloomberg. Output from Tesla's Shanghai Giga factory decreased significantly last month. According to data from the China Passenger Car Association, Tesla shipped 60,000 vehicles from its China factory in February, the lowest level since December 2022. Shipments in February were down 16 percent from January and 19 percent year on year. Over the past two years, China has implemented a series of restrictive measures against Tesla, including prohibiting Tesla vehicles from entering state-owned enterprises, government agencies, and overpasses. Apple is required to store all data in China. These measures reflect the CCP's strengthened control over foreign companies. Experts have also warned that foreign companies operating in China face more risks as the CCP can seize assets at any time. Tesla produces the Model 3 and Model Y in Shanghai. The company upgraded these two models last year to attract more customers. On March 1st, Tesla introduced a series of new incentives in China to attract Chinese consumers, such as insurance subsidies. This is the latest strategy in the ongoing price war between the company and competitors like BYD in the Chinese electric vehicle market. Tesla announced that customers purchasing the Model 3 or Model Y rear-wheel drive versions in March will receive three benefits: first, a limited-time loan with an annual interest rate of only 1.99 percent; second, 
insurance subsidies of up to 8,000 yuan. Finally, customers opting to change the vehicle color will enjoy a 10,000 yuan discount. These incentives will reduce the price of the Model 3 and Model Y by over 3% to 246,000 yuan and 250,000 yuan, respectively. Tesla's profit margins have been affected by the price war. The U.S. electric car giant warned in January that sales growth would significantly slow down this year as the company focuses on producing the next generation of electric cars under the codename Redwood. Another issue facing Tesla is the production cuts at its Chinese factory. Bloomberg reported that the company instructed workers at its Shanghai factory to reduce production of Model 3 and Model Y cars, cutting the number of working days per week from 6.5 days to 5 days. The production line operates two shifts per day, each lasting 11.5 hours unchanged from before. Production volume at Tesla's Shanghai factory has been reduced since early March, but staff have not been given clear instructions, so it is unclear when production will return to normal. Insiders said that some production lines at Tesla's Shanghai factory, such as the battery workshop, will face longer shutdowns. Tesla has informed employees and some suppliers to prepare for extended production restrictions until April. UBS analyst Joseph Spack pointed out earlier this month that the upcoming Model 2 from Tesla could help accelerate its unit growth, but it will be late to enter the Chinese market. Meanwhile, he said in a report to clients that Tesla faces fierce competition in the Chinese market. Tesla generated $21.8 billion in revenue from the Chinese market in 2023, accounting for 22.5% of its total revenue. On March 20th, Tesla China announced that prices would increase on April 1st, with Model Y manufactured at the Shanghai factory increasing by 5,000 yuan. At the same time, the current insurance subsidy of 8,000 yuan and the color change discount will expire on March 31st. The Model Y is Tesla's best-selling model globally since its launch in 2020. According to Tesla, the Model Y is one of the safest SUVs under a million yuan. Even as a family car, it offers a sports car-like performance. CNEV Post, which focuses on Chinese electric vehicles, reported that Tesla's impending price hike in China seems to mirror its overseas price adjustments, but given the ongoing price competition in China, the price raise appears highly unusual. The report suggests that Tesla's early announcement of the price hike seems to be aimed at customers still on the fence, urging them to place their orders quickly, a tactic they've used before. Meanwhile, Tesla is actively expanding into the Indian market. On March 15th, India announced a reduction in import taxes on certain electric vehicles for large multinational companies committing to invest at least $500 million and establish manufacturing plants within three years. This move could potentially accelerate Tesla's plans to enter the Indian market, offering a glimmer of hope for Tesla's stock price, which has seen a significant decline this year. This policy marks a significant victory for Tesla, aligning with the company's long-standing lobbying efforts in New Delhi. Last July, Tesla proposed building a factory in India, while also advocating for reduced import tariffs. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has criticized India's import tariffs as among the highest globally. China is pursuing a long-term project to shift its manufacturing operations away from China, aiming to mitigate risks to its most critical supply chains. Under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India has been seeking closer ties with the U.S. and positioning itself as a manufacturing hub. According to media reports from December last year, Apple aimed to have the batteries for its latest generation of iPhones manufactured in India. This move is part of its efforts to diversify its global supply chain and relocate production away from China. Before the iPhone 14, only a small number of Apple's iPhones were assembled in India, with production lagging behind China by six to nine months. Starting in 2022, this delay has been significantly reduced. And as of the end of March last year, 7% of Apple's iPhones were produced in India. Insiders say that the goal for 2023 was to bring output times in India closer to those in China. Three informed sources said that Apple's Taiwan battery supplier, Simplo Technology, has been asked to expand its production scale in India to meet future orders. Battery manufacturers like Desai in China are also encouraged to establish new factories in India. One Apple informant said that if everything goes smoothly with a battery supply for the iPhone 16, Apple plans to transfer more iPhone battery production to India.
In addition, a minister of the Indian government said that Apple's Japanese supplier, TDK, is establishing a 180-acre factory in Manesar, Haryana, to produce iPhone batteries. Furthermore, the iPhone 15 from Apple is already being produced in Tamil Nadu state in India to further narrow the gap between Indian operations and China's manufacturing base. According to Bloomberg's August 16, 2023 report, insiders said that Apple supplier Foxconn Group's factory in Sri Purumbudur is preparing to deliver the latest equipment weeks after delivery begins as the company seeks to quickly increase the number of new iPhones from India. Other technology and trade sectors are also being impacted by the U.S.-China decoupling. The U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill on March 13 by an overwhelming vote of 352 to 65 targeting TikTok, the short-form video app owned by China-based parent company ByteDance. They demand that ByteDance divest control of TikTok within 180 days or face a ban in the United States. The bill asserts that TikTok's collection of U.S. user data poses a national security risk. The White House subsequently urged the Senate to act quickly on the bill passed by the House, with President Biden saying that he would sign it into law if passed. Meanwhile, the Federal Communications Commission is investigating whether the use of Chinese and Russian satellite systems in U.S. devices poses a security threat. Additionally, Chinese ride-hailing giant Didi Chuxing is facing a lawsuit in U.S. courts, accused of defrauding investors. On March 14th, Chairman of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer, announced the launch of a government-wide investigation to examine the penetration and influence of the CCP in the United States. They have sent letters to nine federal departments, including the Department of Justice, the Department of Agriculture, and the U.S. Agency for Global Media, requesting briefings on key issues by March 20th. Comer pointed out that the CCP is waging war against the U.S. by targeting, influencing, and infiltrating every economic sector and community in America. U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo said on March 11th that the U.S. could further tighten controls on China's access to sophisticated semiconductor technologies. She emphasized that the U.S. will not allow the CCP to use its most advanced technology to achieve military progress. In trade, U.S. rule revisions have reduced China's imports to America. According to last year's data, China's exports to the U.S. decreased by 20 percent, making China no longer the largest source of imports for the U.S. Trade statistics released by the U.S. Department of Commerce show that China has fallen to second place for U.S. imports for the first time since 2006. Meanwhile, imports from Europe and Southeast Asia have increased. The CCP is also advancing laws such as anti-espionage, national security, and data laws. This is also effectively engaging in decoupling. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Chinese government is actively promoting a plan that requires state-owned enterprises in critical industries like finance and energy to gradually replace foreign software in their information technology systems with domestic ones, with the specific goal of complete replacement by 2027. Meanwhile, according to sources from Bloomberg, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology is urging domestic car manufacturers to increase procurement of local components and accelerate the use of domestic chips. The goal is for at least one-fifth of the chips used by domestic car manufacturers to be sourced domestically by 2025, aiming to minimize reliance on foreign semiconductors. Who's going to hurt most from the U.S.-China decoupling? Huang Guochen, assistant researcher at Taiwan's Chonghua Institution of Economic Research, said that China will be affected more, mainly because the entire technology control is still in the hands of Europe and the United States. For instance, despite Xiaomi's recent fervor to develop electric vehicles, its chips still come from Qualcomm and NVIDIA. So overall, China still relies on technology from the United States. However, the U.S. still needs to export, and the Chinese market is still a very important market globally. Additionally, labor statistics in China throughout the entire supply chain appears to be more favorable compared to Southeast Asia or India. So, overall, the market is evenly split between the U.S. and China. Technology is controlled by the United States, while the advantage in terms of labor may lie in China. So the decoupling process is likely to be prolonged and painful.
As for the outcome of U.S.-China decoupling, former Beijing lawyer Liang Xiaohua believes that neighboring countries will benefit, including Vietnam, Malaysia, India, and Mexico. These lower-cost countries will rebuild reliable supply chains. For Western countries, these supply chains are unlikely to be as vulnerable to CCP influence or control as China's. The three-year pandemic has also prompted more Western governments and major corporations to decouple from China's supply chains. Foreign asset management firms are accelerating their withdrawal from the Chinese financial market. In November last year, Vanguard confirmed its exit from China, while BlackRock announced the liquidation of its stock funds in China in September. Additionally, Canada's three largest pension funds and Norway's sovereign wealth fund have announced the closure of their offices in China. On February 13th, MSCI Incorporated removed 66 Chinese companies from its MSCI China Index in its later quarterly assessment. The CCP is feeling the chill of the West decoupling from the Chinese economy. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said at the Munich Security Conference on February 17th that the big ocean of the international economy cannot return to isolated lakes, and the trend of economic globalization cannot be reversed. Independent commentator Tsai Shen Kun commented on the X platform, saying that Wang Yi's words are obviously self deception. In fact, more and more discerning people have realized that decoupling from China is necessary to mitigate risks. The biggest and only winner of economic globalization is China. Other developed economies, including the US, that has been pushing globalization are on the losing side. They're only waking up now to decouple and break the chains, something that is actually too late.